Hello, this is Bishop, and this is a test of Autopilot version 39.6. The purpose of this test that we're going to look at today is specifically going to be focused around the blind spot detection and the automatic lanes change capability that is available in the new 39.6 version that is focused more on cameras rather than just relying simply on the ultrasonic sensors. So for this particular video, I didn't record any live narration while I was driving. This was actually just a quick drive on break from work to grab some lunch. I'd followed the same route the previous day and tried to do the drive using automated lane change as much as possible. The road width and the traffic conditions on this route were great for testing out blind spot detection and automatic lane change that day, so I set up my recording rig to capture some footage the next day. I'm adding the narration after the fact and will edit the video to jump to the actual instances of lane change and blind spot detection that I was able to capture. So coming up right here is the first lane change that I attempted to do. You'll notice that when I turned on the turn signal there were no adjacent lane lines at first, so it did not do a lane change because the lanes were not detected. As soon as the lanes were detected, I turned the signal off and turned it back on again, which allowed it to do a normal lane change. There weren't any cars in my way, so there's nothing to look at. Now what happens here is I tried to initiate a lane change. It started to do the lane change, it did detect the lane, but it immediately entered an intersection at which point I got a message up on the display that said that the lane change was cancelled, presumably because the lane lines went away and because the car also knows that changing lanes in an intersection would be illegal. Now, I did actually change lanes in an intersection in a previous test, it wasn't on purpose, it just kind of came up quickly. Um, so the car can actually do that, but it looks like it is specifically programmed not to do that, which is a good thing. Uh, the only thing is, I think whether or not it'll actually do it depends on how committed you are to the lane change prior to you entering the intersection. I think if you're you know, probably at the halfway point or more than halfway point, it will go ahead and finish the lane change as opposed to where I was just then, where I had just started the lane change and entered the intersection, at which point it canceled and returned to the original lane. Now you'll notice there, when I approached this intersection, I did take over from the autopilot. The reason for that is because as I was coming over the crest of the hill, I felt like it was detecting the car ahead of me a little bit late, and I didn't want to create an unsafe situation by waiting to see if the autopilot was going to kick in and start braking. So, better safe than sorry. Um, coming over the crests of hills and coming around corners is definitely when autopilot has a little bit harder time detecting that there is a car ahead of you in your lane. So for this part, I attempted to initiate a lane change while there was a car in my alongside my car, basically my blind spot. Same thing happened. There wasn't a stoplight, but I did enter what was essentially an intersection. The lane lines went away, and the lane change was canceled. Once I got past that, though, I left the turn signal on the entire time. The lane change did go ahead and go once it detected that there was a lane there. And here I, I stopped deliberately because there's a stoplight, and Autopilot does not deal with those yet. So for this part, I initiate a left lane change, and there are no cars around, so there's nothing particularly special about that. But it did do it on a curve on a local road, and it did a pretty good job of making the lane change. There it kind of hesitates like it's going to go into the turn lane, but it quickly corrects itself and ends up going straight. So for this part, I just do a standard lane change to the right. There aren't any cars around me at the time that I do the lane change. I'm just getting myself into a better position so that I will be able to do lane changes as passing once I get a little further down the road. So we have the same thing here again, only this time I'm initiating lane change as I'm tailing another car and slowing down because I was starting to close on the tailing distance for that car. You'll notice once I get over into the right-hand lane, the car then starts to accelerate back up to full speed that it was set at for the adaptive cruise control, at which point it then starts immediately slowing down because it sees that there's another car in front of me in that lane. So this is where it starts to get interesting. So you'll see on my left, in what is approximately the blind spot on my car, the car starts approaching. I turn on the turn signal, the line turns red, turns red again, waits until the car is completely clear, and then it starts to initiate the lane change. I took over from autopilot right there because I wanted to make sure I was all the way in the lane before I entered the intersection. Not because I was concerned autopilot wasn't going to handle it, but because I just saw a cop coming in the opposite direction and I didn't want to get a ticket for it. Um, so then I initiate another left-hand lane change, it gets over just fine. So for this part, I went ahead and did the lane change myself because, as you can see, there's a lot of traffic and there were also not uh, there was not a large gap between the white solid white lines, and the car will not change lanes over solid white lines. So you see, I have my left turn signal on, the lane line turned red, and once the car passed, then it turned white, and I went ahead and made the change. 
Now here, I turn on autopilot. A car is passing me on my left, so I turn on the automated lane change. It waits until the car gets a certain distance ahead of me, and then the car actively slows down to go ahead and make the, the lane change into that lane, which is interesting. This is the sort of behavior that you know we'll, we'll probably expect to see with the drive-on navigation um, that's going to come in a future update. So here, there's a car a little bit ahead of me to the right, not quite enough clearance for the car to comfortably get over. You'll see the lane line turns red, so it's not just blind spot detection, it is indicating that your lane change is blocked by another vehicle, regardless of how far ahead of you or behind you it is. If it's close enough that you're in too close proximity, it'll turn that lane line red. So blind spot detection not only covers your blind spot, it covers the entire length of the vehicle. Now, I'm changing lanes to the right again, as a car is passing me, does the same thing, flashes red, waits, even though the lane line doesn't stay red the entire time, you can see the car clearly knows that there's a car there, and it does wait until it's clear before it goes ahead and initiates the lane change. So here, I initiate a lane change while I'm passing a car, even though I'm going at a relatively steady rate of speed, the car on my left starts to speed up, so I turn, so it doesn't initiate the lane change, and then I manually cancel it because I see that I'm about to enter an intersection. Now as this car is passing me, I start the lane change again. Didn't get a red lane line that time, uh, which is a little weird, but it did go ahead and wait until it was clear before getting ahead and getting behind that red pickup truck. So this part coming up here is one of the most interesting parts of the test. I start to do a left-hand lane change. I'm behind that red car, um, but the tailing distance doesn't permit me to get over. So what I actually did there is, while I was still on autopilot with the turn signal on and then trying to actively make a lane change, I pressed the accelerator manually to close the distance between myself and the red truck. Once I closed the distance between myself and the truck, it saw there was sufficient gap to get over, so the car went ahead and did the lane change, all without me having to take it off of autopilot. So in that particular instance, I did manually intervene, but only by pressing the accelerator and not in a fashion that actually required me to take off the autopilot or do the lane change myself. I just closed the distance between myself and the car ahead of me, which gave the car uh, en enough distance from the yellow car that I was trying to pass that it felt comfortable enough to get over uh, into the other lane. So for this part, I tried to initiate an automated lane change, but the car you'll see ahead of me started to turn left across lanes of traffic. The lane that I was going to turn into would have possibly put me on an intersecting path with that car, so I, before it got out of hand, went ahead and took over from the car. I am kind of curious to see what it would have done in that situation. Probably would have um, triggered the, the tag automatic braking when it saw that there was an obstacle in the path, but um, it was a little bit too much traffic around for me to mess around with that, and I also didn't want to make the driver of that minivan nervous by having him think I was swerving to try and crash into them. So for right here, same deal, I'm passing a car that is on my right. I turn the turn signal on, you see the blind spot detection, or the adjacent car detection, I guess I should say, come on. Once it's clear, it goes ahead and gets over to the other lane. Now watch the lane line disappear here on the right as soon as I start passing by a solid white line. It will not register a lane that is separated by a solid white line as a lane that you can change into. And as soon as it gets back to a dash line, then it lets me go again. Goes back to solid, disappears. Now, for this part coming up, um, I was just curious. I wanted to see what would happen. This is a very sharp right turn, but it is a pretty clearly marked fairly sharp right turn. So I decided to leave the car on autopilot on a relatively slow speed, dropped it down to 25, and see what it did. And look at how sharp that lane line turns. It actually almost makes the turn successfully. It does start to go wow. over a little bit. You can even see wow in the recording. Um, and, and then it automatically, instead of going out into the wrong lane, it actually automatically corrected and went back into the correct lane. So 
that was pretty impressive. Um, I'm probably going to test stuff like that out. I mean, there are definitely a, a lot of little right-hand turns with clearly marked in lane lines that I can play around with. But yeah, that pretty much concludes everything that I did for this test. Um, you know, there were a lot of instances of lane changes where I was passing or another car was passing me. Here, I just do a standard lane change again. You can see that lane line flare out when I start passing um, the end of a turn lane. But yeah, I mean, overall, I'd say this did really well. Like when I took this lunch drive the previous day, I basically just left it on autopilot the entire time and just allowed the car to swerve in and out of traffic um, as I was making lane changes to, you know, get around slow cars or get into the turn lane that I needed to. I only took over in instances where I had to stop at a stoplight. Obviously, if a car stops ahead of me, then I don't even need to stop. And in this instance, like right there, I have to initiate that change because the white line comes up very quickly and there's no dashed line to let it know. So it doesn't necessarily deal with like a turn lane gap like you might have on a highway exit that doesn't have a dedicated um, exit lane so we'll, we'll see what they end up doing with that so that's my video and thanks for watching I've included my referral code in the description so if you or anyone you know is planning on getting a Tesla I don't really care about the material upgrade so much but I would love to be able to get my hands on software updates earlier so that I can make more videos like this for you guys so if you like my video subscribe and thanks again